What's up guys and welcome back. We have an awesome Switch 2 update video today with multiple updates including about Cyberpunk 2077's development on Switch 2, multiple different iterations of the console itself that CD Projekt Red was working on in development, and we're going to be talking about how this is most likely the best possible outcome we could have hoped for for the Switch 2's SoC with NVIDIA getting very customized features for Nintendo to work with Switch 2. We have updating resolution numbers regarding Hogwarts Legacy, which may in fact yet again prove a certain site wrong in terms of what they stated for the Switch 2's performance for this game. So if you do enjoy this content guys, please do hit that like button and subscribe for more and we will get started. So first up, let's talk about this right away regarding Switch 2 and Hogwarts Legacy. Sega released a PR statement from Japan because Sega actually is the publisher of WB games in Japan for Nintendo consoles and Switch 2. And they released a statement regarding Hogwarts Legacy, its resolution and its DLSS support. Now they said the game will actually be getting DLSS and improved lighting and shadow animation and anti-aliasing and 1440p resolution in TV mode and 1080p with HDR in handheld mode. Now you may or may not recall this, but back when the game was first revealed on Switch 2, Digital Foundry did say that the game was running at 720p and they did not notice any type of DLSS for the system. But they did note that the game did look a little soft, but they weren't quite sure what was going on per se as far as what their upscaling method was, if they had any upscaling method, just that it looked kind of soft. And it's rendering at about 720p in our shots, curiously enough. The PS4 version is actually at 900p here with FSR1 upscaling, at least going back to my coverage from two years ago. That's what I discovered there. Uh, but interestingly, it looks a lot better than PS4 here. So presumably there's some kind of, you know, temporal upsampling process maybe here, some kind of different uh, TAA that's in use possibly, something different going on here that's producing in the end a markedly better result than PS4 with its own process. I think 720p was the, the number that most consistently came up. And uh, rather than translating to lot a lot of aliasing this is more i think the anti-aliasing method used here ends up uh producing a rather soft image overall it's uh, a little bit sort of uh smoothed and uh, not very defined but it you know it, it's still still very workable now many other people who play this game in person at the switch 2 test events said that Hogwarts Legacy looked great and crisp and ran well at 30 frames per second, basically locked. And most people never said anything about the image quality looking rather soft, only Digital Foundry. And 720p wasn't anything anybody else said as well, just Digital Foundry. Now, in my point of view, if it is running with DLSS and docked mode with 1440p, Technically, they could be using the Switch 2's enhanced customized DLSS, which from what we just reviewed last week, we did a comparison of Cyberpunk 2077 running at 1080p native and 1080p transformer model in quality mode and the actual footage from Switch 2 of Cyberpunk 2077 in the same area. And it looked incredibly close, if not exactly the same as DLSS quality mode in transformer model, which is DLSS 4. Switch 2 version transformer model switch to versus transformer model the lighting like we said before is a little bit different so it may make the scene look a little different barring the differences in lighting it's very hard to tell a difference here now if the switch 2 version of hogwarts legacy is using dlss in docked mode for 1440p and it's 720p base internally that would be dlss performance mode and DLSS performance mode, if it's using Switch 2's custom DLSS, which looks awfully close to Transformer model, then it would look pretty darn good in docked mode, and most people likely would not be able to tell the difference. They'll probably think it looks just like 1440p or something similar than upscale the 4K on your TV, either by your TV or the Switch 2 itself, because it will be outputting at 4K. So that is extremely good news for the Switch 2 version of Hogwarts Legacy. And 1080p portable is likely also using DLSS. But again, since this DLSS that Switch 2 is using is so good, you can't really compare it to the normal DLSS or even FSR of things like the Steam Deck, for example. If you've ever seen the Steam Deck version of this game 
Hogwarts Legacy running, you'll know that the Switch 2 version already looks a lot better in its current iteration on the console than it ever did on the Steam Deck. So it does look like this is going to be a very good port of Hogwarts Legacy for the Switch 2. Personally, I'm not really interested in that series. I never was, so I probably won't be picking it up. But of course, other games we will be trying out, like the aforementioned Cyberpunk 2077 and other things as well. But moving on, CD Projekt Red did an interview with Nintendo Life regarding the Switch 2 port of Cyberpunk 2077, talking about the various aspects of development, but they said something very interesting about the change of development of from Switch 1 versus Switch 2. It wasn't just having a more powerful console, no. They were asked by Nintendo Life, they said, beyond sheer power, what would you have found that makes a Switch 2 different to develop for than the original Switch? And they replied, one of the biggest differences was in developing for a platform that is still evolving, meaning changing. Working on hardware that was actively being iterated on came with its own set of challenges, but thankfully Nintendo was very supportive and responsible throughout the process. Whenever we hit a snag, they were quick to engage and help us pass it. Now, this could mean various things regarding what the differences in the evolving hardware could be. We know with the Switch 2, the SoC was leaked back in 2022 as being the T239 chip, and we know it has various customizations on it. So if that was the case and they're using that version of a Switch 2, then you would think it wouldn't be that difficult to develop the port of Cyberpunk 2077 for Switch 2 if it was just that one chip the entire time. But since they brought out it was being iterated on throughout the development process, since this is a launch game, this makes me wonder about the rumors of the Switch 2's SoC being bid heavily on by AMD back in 2024 range or so. And the reason why they fell through and didn't work out with them was because the performance and efficiency at 5 watts was being reported that it wasn't quite good enough and Nintendo went ahead and went with Nvidia instead, which was the better choice and was always going to be the better choice in my opinion at this point because AMD, especially regarding their upscaling technology, has just not quite been up to par with FSR versus DLSS. DLSS is by far the much, much, much better choice for Nintendo, especially with getting ports and rendering them at low resolutions because that's going to be the key, as we can already tell, for Switch 2 games to even run on the console at all. And as we've been talking about for the last few years, just because Nvidia assumed that they were going to be powering the Switch 2, which of course they did, thankfully, it didn't mean that they were a lock in a contract with Nintendo. Every single different piece of hardware does have the ability to be bid on by different vendors and AMD was one of them and they didn't quite make it this time. No doubt they also did that for the Switch 1 as well and didn't work out for them then either. And after the Wii U happened, quite possibly Nintendo was very wary to use AMD continually going forward and they wanted to go with something different and Nvidia basically gave them the golden goose with the Switch 1. So likely they were going to be favoring Nvidia here anyway, but it is interesting to see that Cyberpunk 2077 was being iterated on from the hardware perspective for CD Projekt Red when they were porting this game to work on Switch 2. Quite possibly they could have been using a different chipset with different RAM from Nvidia, or they could have been using something completely different like we talked about with AMD, we just don't know, or any other different type of chip as well maybe from Intel. We may never know the full truth. A lot of these things never get explained afterwards due to NDAs, but that is very interesting that they talked about that the platform was still evolving during development, especially since we know that chip, the T239, was actually done years ago. So it's quite possible Nintendo was looking at other options to see what will work best for their games to be ported on Switch 2 for the release of this console later on. But tying into that regarding the T239 chip, it being developed back in 2021 and then finalized around 2022 range really shows something interesting though about Nvidia's development timeline for the Ampere and Ada Lovelace GPUs. This may in fact be the absolute best possibility Nintendo could have had for this chip for Switch 2 because of the release timing simply wasn't going to be ready for something like Blackwell from Nvidia since Blackwell just came out in 2025 and Ada Lovelace came out at the end of 2022 with the RTX 4090 and then in early 2023 they released the other variants of the Ada Lovelace GPUs like the RTX 4070 and 4060. So for Nintendo they likely needed something to be ready a lot sooner and since Blackwell was off the table they were going to need something that was cost effective yet also very performant 
And if Nvidia provided them with that chip back in 2021, then what it appears they did, since the Ada Lovelace architecture is actually what the T239 chip is based on. Yes, you heard that right in case you missed my last video. The Nvidia T239 chip for Switch 2 is in fact based on the Ada Lovelace architecture in its design. The actual cores inside the SoC are in fact ampere based, which is why if we look again at the actual diagram of the scan of the SoC, it matches Ada Lovelace, but the cores are actually ampere based. And when the chip was actually finalized for Nintendo in late 2021 and early 2022, when it was finally leaked, basically it looks like Nvidia offered Nintendo to design the T239 chip to be like an Ada Lovelace GPU with all the features and actual design of it, but with Ampere cores, which means it's almost like similar to a PlayStation 5 Pro or PS4 Pro and how AMD designed it for Sony, they gave Sony some future tech with AMD to have those consoles get certain technologies before they were even released to the public. And that's exactly what it looks like Nvidia did for Nintendo, which yes, that means the chip that Nintendo's using from Nvidia is pretty much standalone. There's no other chip like it since it has Ampere cores and is designed like Ada Lovelace. And yes, the Switch 2 does produce DLSS that is just as impressive as the Transformer model and they could be using something even a little bit different as well to have things specialized at 540p for example. And I had a lot of questions over the weekend in my Mass Effect 2 live streams about DLSS and also 540p resolutions for Switch 2. People were concerned like, hey, what does this mean that Switch 2 can't really render games at 720p even or 1080p even? What does that mean? Does that mean it's too weak or something? There's a lot of confusion about what it means to render something at 540p and then upscale it to 1080p or even to 1440p. So a lot of people don't realize that it takes more computational power to run games upscaled than it does at native resolution with DLSS. So there's lots of varying different examples out there, but the latest information, at least from Blackwell and Ada Lovelace, is that if you're running a game at 4K DLSS performance mode, which is 1080p internal rendering resolution, there's gonna be a performance penalty versus just running the game at native 1080p. And it's all dependent on how performant the tensor cores are in that variant of the GPU, whether it's Ampere, Ada Lovelace or Blackwell or even going all the way back to Turing with the 2000 series of RTX. And the tensor cores are more performant in Ada Lovelace and Blackwell. So the Ampere tensor cores, they're very, very good, don't get me wrong, but they aren't quite as performant or efficient as Ada Lovelace or Blackwell, which means that when Switch 2, for example, does use DLSS, it's going to cost more performance to make it run but it still will be better than running it at native resolution overall, but it's not the same as just rendering the game at 540p without using DLSS. There is a performance penalty. So just because it's 540p rendering internal doesn't mean that that's actually what the system is only capable of doing. When you add DLSS performance on top of that, it's requiring more grunt and power to be used from the GPU. Now you may ask, well, what's the point of using DLSS if it just negates the performance? Well, the answer to that though is it's not enough of a performance hit to justify them not using it. And the image quality benefit far outweigh them just using native resolution, for example, because of the frame rate and of actually using anti-aliasing with DLSS without even the need of using TAA because DLSS has its own method of anti-aliasing just by using AI, which is probably why the Switch 2 version of Street Fighter 6 looks a lot better than the Xbox Series S version in just in image quality, even though it's been confirmed by multiple outlets that the Xbox Series S version and PS4 version of Street Fighter 6 render at a native 1080p. With Switch 2 rendering at 540p upscaled to 1080p with DLSS, the reason why it looks like a sharper image than those other consoles is because it's using AI to actually sharpen and filter the lines of that game to make it look crisper and more clean to the eyes. So that is the big benefit of using DLSS, even though it's rendering at a lower resolution internally, it does take more processing power from Switch 2 to actually upscale it even more so with DLSS and the results speak for themselves it looks absolutely amazing so i wouldn't be really concerned at all about resolution numbers for actual internal resolutions that they spotted that people talk about with switch 2 i would actually just look at the end result and then compare it for yourself to see what actually looks good and if it looks like 1080p if it looks like 1440p if it looks like 4k then hey i don't think anyone is going to complain 
and this is actually great news for Switch 2 and for the future of the console. So yeah, I think Switch 2 has a long future ahead of it. I'm very excited for this console, but let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section. That's going to do it for this one, guys. If you did enjoy this content, please hit the like button, and I'll talk to you very soon in the next video. Have a great day.